Hello, we're here with Daniel Povey, and today we're going to be taking questions from this GitHub project. And here's a tutorial written by Fang Jun Kuang. Yeah. Our first question is, what is a ragged tensor? Okay, so the... Uh... So a ragged tensor is a kind of, uh, I suppose it's a kind of data structure. Uh, it's it's basically a list of lists. In the most in the most basic uh, example, uh, a two a two dimensional ragged tensor would be a list of lists, or a three dimensional ragged tensor would be a list of lists of lists. But but they can contain anything. They can contain integers or uh, floating point values. So they they're actually the same thing as the concept of ragged tensor in tensorflow they, they have a similar thing but we we use them generally for different things than they're used in tensorflow uh so so in tensorflow they're generally would be used to store like uh some kind of floating point thing some real in our case they're most often used to store our integers and we Kind of use them in various algorithms. Okay, why do we need them? Well, so the original purpose, the main purpose of K two was to was to support finite state transducers, and it turns out so finite state transducers are kind of difficult to support on GPUs because the algorithms tend to uh, have loops where you don't know the loop bounds in advance, or the loop bounds are like kind of irregular. And it turns out ragged tensors are a very convenient way to implement that kind of thing. But it also, it, it turns out that actually it, it's a very convenient data structure for general GPU programming. So if you want to be able to program something kind of slightly irregular on the GPU, it's just very convenient to use ragged tensors for it. Okay, well, f firstly, let me mention that uh, I actually came up with the, with the whole design for this like independently, and then later discovered that it was uh, identical to what they've done in TensorFlow. So I think it is quite a uh, a natural design for this kind of thing. Uh, we're using it for a, kind of a more general thing. So so the way K two is set up in C plus uh, plus, you can. In C++, you can use a macro to create this kind of, uh, basically you can use a macro, macro to create a kernel on GPU and you write a little piece of code that operates over this ragged matrix and it manipulates various indexes and stuff. And basically it's a way that without being a super GPU expert, you can quite easily code irregular algorithms on GPU. And most of the actual non-trivial GPU code, uh, most of the things that you would need to do, uh, there would already be code in K2 to, K2 to do that. Like there's various ways of composing different ragged array shapes or concatenating them or like indexing one with another. And and most of non most non-trivial things you might want to do in GPU programming can I can be done with some combination of those things or just individual things where you use the macro. So I'm not saying it's like super easy to understand how it all works, but once you do, it makes non-trivial GPU stuff relatively straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. So, so, mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Do you have anything else? Yeah. So the original purpose of K2 was uh was all about finite state acceptor and finite state transducer algorithms. And I think we did a pretty good job of implementing those for GPU. We're, we're, the original plan was to kind of base our whole speech recognition stuff uh, very closely around that and to use it to implement various fancy things. Now, in the end, some of those fancy things that we were going to do ended up not really working as well as we hoped. And actually, we ended up using simpler things like RNNT and stuff that you don't 
need very much of K2 to implement them. Like we're not, sometimes we're using K2 for, to do lattices and stuff, but we're not using it as much as we thought we might. And it turns out that for most of what we're doing, uh, K2 isn't even needed in the runtime. It's just needed during training time. Actually, that's convenient because it means that you need less code uh, during inference. Uh, I, I, I do think K2 is a neat design. Uh, you know, that once you understand how it works, you can code a lot of stuff easily in it. Uh, that isn't always super necessary for what we need to do. Sometimes we can just use regular PyTorch and it's enough. But sometimes there's things that we find very convenient to use K2. Okay, back to this GitHub. Oh, yeah, back to this GitHub question. Mm -hmm. um, clarify how ragged tensors relate to PyTorch sparse matrices because they do look very similar. Yeah, so uh, you could use ragged tensors to represent a, a sparse matrix because. In a sparse matrix, let's suppose it's a matrix with with four rows. Uh, each each row could have a some unknown number of like non-zero elements in it. So you could store the co column indexes, let's say, as a sorted list for each row. And uh, so in that example, there it says a equals one, two, two, three, four, etc. Like if you interpret those numbers there as column indexes that could store like the uh the integer part of the uh of the sparse matrix and then you could store the floating point part separately as a separate array so basically you could use ragged tensors to implement a uh the sparse matrix and i think in effect some implementations do but it's a more general thing and you can use it for other things too and like snippet okay yeah do you have anything else to say about PyTorch sparse matrices? Uh, I think PyTorch sparse matrices are like a much more uh, a much more limited thing than K two. Firstly, I think PyTorch's implementation for sparse matrices is not actually that much like K two because they only support the so-called COO layout, the coordinate layout, where for each element of the sparse matrix, they store both the row and column index. So it doesn't really have the structure of this like ragged array uh, where you store the list of column indexes for each row. Now, other sparse matrix toolkits do support, usually they support three different layouts. It's COO, uh, like row wise and column wise i forget the acronyms for those uh but pytorch at least last time i checked only supports that one it, it turns out that uh for things like pytorch it's generally not that convenient to use sparse matrices because they tend to be slow on gpu and it's tricky for things like uh, differentiation and backprop so they're not things that we often use Cool. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. That was Daniel Povey. <laughs>